do subscribe to ekeda channel and press bell icon to get updates about latest engineering hsc and iit je main and advanced videos so hello students today we will be talking about hydraulic turbines we have already seen two turbines uh, we have seen francis turbine and periton turbine now this is the second type of reaction turbine that will be starting today uh, there are two ways in which you can classify turbines first is uh, the impulse turbine and next is the reaction turbine we have already seen the periton turbine which is an example of impulse turbine uh, reaction turbines we have two turbines in a syllabus that is francis and kaplan so we have already studied the francis turbine and today we will study the working construction of Kaplan turbine. So before uh, we go on to the details, let me tell you something about the Kaplan turbine. Uh, when we saw the classification of turbines, we saw that the, classif uh, the cl turbines are classified in different ways like uh, depending on the head that they use. So we have seen that the Periton wheel uses a very high head, second uh, the Francis turbine uses moderate head and the Kaplan turbine it requires very less head and the discharge of the Kaplan turbine is very high. So it's the Kaplan turbine is a low head turbine and it, the discharge is very high. Next, secondly, uh, Kaplan turbine is the turbine which is having a very high specific speed. Also, Kaplan turbine is purely axial turbine. So Kaplan turbine is similar to Francis turbine in many ways, but there are certain constructional differences between both of them. So we'll be looking at the difference in construction and the formulas and the formula of discharge and the efficiencies will remain the same. So let's uh, see the construction of Kaplan turbine now. So what I've drawn here is uh, the front view cross section of the Kaplan turbine. So it's the front view and the cross section of the Kaplan turbine. If you take it, it will look something like this. So this is just I've drawn now. Uh, I'll write their names for different uh, parts. I'll write the name of different parts and then you'll, then you'll come to know uh, how it works.
So as you can see, there is a scroll casing to which uh, the water enters into the scroll casing. And after it enters into the scroll casing, it's, uh, it glides on the guide vanes. And after completing the uh, way from the guide vane, it enters into the moving vane. And after it enters the moving vane, the propeller starts rotating and the, it creates energy. And the energy is given to the shaft, the rotation is given to the shaft, in which in turn helps to generate power or you can say it helps to generate work. And the water that comes out of the uh, from the propeller goes to the discharge tube, uh, it goes to the draft tube and then finally it enters into the tail race. So this is how it looks like the diagram and as you can see the discharge is the area that is available for discharge can be easily calculated. T0 is the outer diameter of the impeller, DB is the diameter of the hub. So difference in the areas will give you the space that is uh, left for water to come out of uh, come out of uh, the inlet side. So the area can be easily calculated from the difference in the diameter that is pi by 4 d outer square minus d inner square and once you know the difference in areas you can easily calculate the discharge. So the procedure is <coughs> the working and everything is most uh, is mostly similar to Francis turbine. The only difference is here the, that the veins are a bit uh, movable here. You can adjust the veins and this guide vein uh, on both the sides, there's scroll casing, there's shaft and there's draft tube. So this is all about the construction uh, of the construction working of the Kaplan turbine. Now let's see the efficiencies and the work and the formulas and the discharge formulas. So the discharge to the runner can be easily calculated. Q is area times velocity. Now you you need to decide what is the area that is available for flow. So the area that is available for flow of water or any fluid is pi by four d zero square minus db square. D0 is the outer diameter of the impeller and DB is the uh, diameter of the hub. So the difference in the diameter so you can calculate the area and once you multiply the area with velocity you get the discharge. And after this is the discharge that will be available now you can get the velocity of the peripheral velocity of the blade as well. The simple formula that we've, that we've been using uh, in the whole chapter. So the formula for discharge for the peripheral velocity of the blade is pi d n by 60 where d is the outer diameter of the impeller blade. So the discharge and the velocity formula remains the same. The velocity triangle remains the same as uh, we saw for Francis turbine. So the only difference in uh, the value of discharge and the value of the peripheral velocity. So discharge formula is a bit different here. In Francis turbine, we used to use uh, some other formula for calculating discharge. Here, the formula is changed because the setup has changed a bit. So that was all about the construction working of the the Kaplan turbine. The formula for efficiencies remain the same. The mechanical efficiency, the overall efficiency, everything remains same as we saw in Francis turbine. So I hope you've understood this topic. Thank you.